Hey guys, it's Daniel, aka Floppy Penguin here, and today I'm gonna be trying something a little different. I'm gonna be going over and giving my reaction and perspective on the PBA Finals uh, from the PBA World Championship number 11 uh, that occurred today, Sunday, March 15th, 2020. So let's go ahead and get right into it. As you see here, we have Anthony Simonson uh, from Texas, and he's throwing an IQ Tour Emerald uh, right now, and he leaves it 210. Uh, so a really cool side note about earlier in the telecast, um, he threw that ball, that IQ Tour Emerald on the last lane, um, leading into this match, and he threw an Axiom, Storm Axiom brand new ball, on the right lane. Um, and it looks like for the players, the left lane has uh, not been as tight, in my opinion. And uh, that's not the ball. And as you yeah, see there, Anthony Simonson says that's not the ball. Uh, I'm assuming that he's talking to his ball reps. Um, and so, um, my opinion, I, I feel like that is probably more or less the right ball for him. Um, but clearly, he doesn't. Um, you know, I, I feel like the reason that's the right ball is because he can keep his angles a little straighter and not have to use that huge entry angle. But speaking of a uh, huge entry angle, here we have Jason Belmonte, the number one seed of this year's World Championship. And you see that, that messenger he gets by the um, entry angle that he's able to create coming into the pocket. As you see, he got it to 5.6 down lane. Uh, which is really far right compared to some where the other some uh, where the other bowlers have been bowling. Um, EJ Tag was really struggling because he kept getting it right a little bit right of that even and was missing head pin or he uh, as we saw in part of his match uh, he left back to back two four eight tens early in the match. Um, because he got it down to like 3, uh, maybe 3.5 down lane, somewhere in that area, rather than that, that 6, 7, 8 area, which is the golden spot for most of uh, today's bowlers. Um, and so let's see how Belmo does here. It looks a little left of the last shot, definitely down lane it was left, 8.6 down lane. Uh, so of course that results in a 4 pin, makes perfect sense. Norma, um, got the so, the tank. you know, they kind of, uh, they kind of go over a little later in the show too the about car. the Storm Axiom, the brand new ball, really, away. really big and core in it, um, definitely like a big engine in it, so it's definitely something useful for a pattern like this, uh, where you want to get left in the oil, um, still so some have something to drive, you know, uh, uh, so it, it definitely has had a good look for all the players on today's telecast, of course, except for EJ Packett. Who was who is a Moda staffer? He's the only non-storm ref um, on this telecast today. So, as we see, speaking of the axiom, uh, that's the exact ball that Anthony Simonson decides to switch to here. Um, and it definitely, I think the reasoning behind it is uh, because he wants something with a little bigger core in it, a bigger engine, uh, so to say, um, instead of the IQ Tour Emerald, because the IQ Tour Emerald is like that medium performance tier, and the Axiom is the high performance tier. As you can see there, I mean, it, it nosedives. Uh, he hit six down lane, 22.4 at the arrows, and it just took off and went straight through the nose, got five through the middle. Um, <clears throat> leaving the three, four, six, seven, ten, uh, as you see. And so, in my opinion, that's why that I thought the IQ Tour Emerald would be a really good ball to throw there, uh, especially for that right lane. You know, try it there, see if you can get something that's a little weaker than that Axiom uh, to go through the pins if you hit pocket. You know, maybe a ring ten, but you know, would probably get to the pocket, which is important whenever you're bowling on something like this. You know, where these guys are. And as you see there, uh, it shows Chris Villa, the number uh, five seed today, um, throwing the pr pitch purple, brand new urethane from Storm. And then you got Anthony Simonson throwing his IQ Tour Emerald earlier, and Jason Belmonte throwing the Axiom. And what that, that pitch purple does, that Chris was throwing in the first match uh, before he was eliminated by Francois Lavoie, um, was carrying down oil. And that's what it did, it carried down the oil. And so that caused caused some of the uh, room that the bowlers had to miss right on to kind of go away because the oil was pushed down the lane rather than taken off the lane like a normal reactive resin ball would do. So throwing the uh, pitch purple kind of did that to the lanes, but at the same time, France Hall of Wall was kind of a blessing to the other bowlers that wanted to get left, um, like Jason Belmonte, EJ Tackett, and Anthony Simonson because he burnt with resin a spot to the right. 
Um, and so as you see there, Belmo just nails that 27 to 5 a line again. I mean, 4.8 down lane, 27.3 at the arrows. You know, something that he doesn't get a lot of credit for as a bowler is his his accuracy. You know, I'm not the biggest fan of Justin Belmonte, I'll be honest, but. Something that I have to give him credit for is his accuracy and his shot making is supreme. You know, he is nailing that line and able to repeat it continuously, which is really cool to see. Because a lot of guys that have that huge, you know, high power, high rev rate, uh, high speed game do not have the accuracy that some guys do, like Norm Duke, who's commenting in the booth right now. Um, so that's something that's really cool to see out of a, such a power player like Jason Belmont. And uh, a really cool side note, too, about Jason at this tournament is his family was there. This is the first ever tournament that they. Uh, have seen him bowling for the TV finals um, in, the, in America, and so that's really cool. And they, his kids saw him shoot 300 for the first time uh, throughout the week, and he shot two for them uh, during match play on this pattern. So that's really cool, something that's a huge blessing for his family, I'm sure. Um, you know, especially with whatever's going on right now, the, the coronavirus and all that, just to be around his family, I'm sure that makes him feel real good. And as he struck there, takes a deep breath in the background, and now you got Anthony Simonson coming back. Sticking with the Axiom, uh, I want to point that out, regardless of his five count that he got the last time he threw it. So as you see there, he gets a down lane and is able to get to come back. So that's what's really good about um, that ball, the Axiom. Rather than staying with the ball down, like I would have um, suggested he do, with the IQ Tour Emerald going to the Axiom, that does allow his miss right to help him uh, if he does miss right. So he hit three board down lane uh, at the break point, and it still came back and got the light mixer as you see there. Um, so that's really great for him. That's that's really uh, good for him. Um, but those miss lefts, the, the misses left are going to really hurt him like the five count that he got because it's such a ball up. Um, so as we see here, throws a decent shot, uh, keeps it a little tight down lane at 6.6 .6 and gets a high flush, but rings the 10 pin. Um, you know, probably has something to do with the way that the ball is rolling a little early and kind of just not continuing through the pins like you would see with something that had a little more energy down lane for you. Um, just like uh, something with a little higher pin, or maybe something that had a little weaker shell again, or uh, weaker cover stock to say at least. Um, but definitely a better look uh, that he has right now, and, and looks a little more comfy with that Axiom. Now, uh, as we see, a really cool shot um, that we have here, uh, kind of like a panning around from the camera. That's new to Fox. I don't think I've ever seen that on any of the other telecasts. So I think it's pretty cool. Um, shout out to them for doing that. Uh, and so, let's see how Belmo throws this one. And once again, I mean, you see he goes high flush there, almost nails that line again. You know, that really does show his amazing, incredible shot making. It's pretty cool. You know, and look at how he's just carving. And then, you know, as he's path. just trying to stay calm there. Right there at uh, 27. You know, in, 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 in moments like this, I'm sure it's very hard uh, to get a lot of things off your mind. Majors, as you see, uh, with Belmo, the career majors that he has is just amazing. I mean, he has more majors than anyone else that's ever bowled the PGA Tour with 12. Right there, you see all 12 laid out. That's pretty insane. Um, and he's done it from all angles, playing right playing way left like he is now, even further left than he is now, I know that, um, he's done it from everywhere on the lane, it's pretty impressive to say the least, he gets it just a little left of target, 28.4 at the arrows and 7.4 down lane break point, uh, but it looks great, still, still goes high flush and just barely gets the 7 out, um, so really good for him. Um, that's that's a really good sign to see that you can miss a little bit and still get it right to pocket and the carry. That's something that Jason is a, a master of is getting the those light pocket hits and half pocket hits to carry. I mean his carry percentage is just through the roof compared to most others on the PGA Tour. And then we see Anthony Simonson here uh, throwing the Axiom still sticking with it on that ball change. Gets it way left of target in which I actually believe that he probably changed his angles a little bit and intentionally did that line rather than actually missing left. Uh, he did have 7.1 as Randy points out down lane. 
Um, I believe that he probably like either shifted his feet right or brought his target in uh, to the left just a little bit. Um, just to get that angle down lane just a hair tighter. More than likely just moved his feet rather than changing his target because he hit something very similar at the arrows. Uh, that's just, you know, what I'm seeing down there. And that, that does make a lot of sense if you want to get that, that make sure that 10 pin gets out and then kind of use a little straighter angle, especially with the power that these guys produce. Let's see how he does here. Gets it just a little left in the oil and it skids a little extra, leaves a two pin. Really easy spare, but that puts him really down in the match. And it's it's not good to see that ball kind of wiggling, as Randy just pointed out, um, when, especially whenever you miss left. That's a really bad sign as a bowler, uh, just because then, you know, you can either force yourself left and get even more into that oil, but then when you miss right, it just skids. Or you can move right more into the friction and hope that it doesn't underreact once you hit that spot again. Um, that's really the only two options that he's got right now if he wants to try and stay alive. You know, it's a pretty high scoring pattern and Jason Belmonte is striking, which is a, a scary thought. So let's see what Jason does here. Looks like a, another really good shot. I mean, he just nailed that line 27.6 to 6.4, missing by less than half of the board on this adjusted line. That's exactly where you want to put it if you're Belmo. It's a high flush again, just another great strike. And he's going to take his second re-rack on this left lane. Not exactly sure why uh, that he was taking the re-racks um, during this match, but something in it that's very interesting to point out, you know, just always want to take those re-racks. Um, and uh, as you see, uh, PBA has added money into this uh, telecast, which I think is brilliant by them uh, to put $150,000 for first place instead of 100000 and 70,000 for second, 40,000 for third, 40,000 uh, 40, for fourth, and uh, 20,000 for fifth. Instead of going with the, uh, the 100,000 for first and so on, it's just really cool to see the PBA doing that because of what happened with the animal pattern shows, trying to help these guys out. So, now we have uh, Belmo. He uh, doesn't strike that time, leaves a 2-4-10. Uh, he hit that same spot it looks like that Anthony had hit that time um, certainly an interesting uh, shot by Belmo um, to see that same like kind of wiggle spot almost the only chance Simonson had was something like this so just continuing on he's going to shoot the 2 4 10 and almost makes it just a little right a little too heavy on the two pin to make that uh, so it does give Anthony Simonson like a glimmer of hope at least um, you know, something that Anthony can look forward to coming into the 8th frame here. Looking to throw some good shots here in the 8th and ninth frame and hope that Belmo somehow just has another open or two opens really uh, to stop it from uh, beating up on him some more. And as you see that weight hole on this axiom that Anthony is throwing as well, similar to the IQ for him and weight hole that I was referring to. Um, and then there you got Anthony Simonson throwing a pretty good shot again. Goes high flush, trying out. Looks like uh, looks like he missed a little bit on that, that one. I'm going to assume that that was a miss. Uh, a little bit right of target, both down lane and at the arrows. Um, so then, uh, if Anthony Simonson strikes here, then that gives him 215 max score still, as you see on the graphic, um, going into the 10th, and that would take at least, uh, you know an open in the 10th frame from Jason Belmonte and a spare, you know, at the at the worst for Simonson in the ninth. So let's see what Simonson does here on the west hooking lane. And looks like he flat tens, which does make a lot of sense. Um, you know, it looks like uh, he hit a pretty close to target, if not right on what he was looking at. And just leaves that flat 10, you know, whenever your ball is swirling like that, it's really hard to get it to go through the pins the right way, especially with something that's got that big of a core in it. Now wants to start rolling so early. So once it gets down lane, it can be really lazy sometimes. And that kind of seems to me like that's exactly what Anthony Simonson is running into right now. 
So when Jason Momonti is basically just having a victory lap right here. Um, as you see his kids in the background. Right. Looks like he throws a little left of target there, but it doesn't matter. It goes high flush. And he already knows by this point, like, hey, I've pretty much won. You know, that's uh, that's a really good feeling for him, I right know. Um, I mean, that's pretty awesome. And as Randy just said, five major telecasts that Jason Momonti has made in a row. That's just an incredible feat. And I know at the beginning of this telecast as well, uh, Norm Duke rated Jason Momonti as the number one bowler of all time, actually, uh, which is, I mean, huge, you know, considering that usually they'll say, like, Walter A. Lane Jr. or, or, or Earl Anthony, um, and then, you know, Belmo just throws it out the window there. It doesn't matter to him. He's just ready to see his family again and, and talk to them about, you know, and, and just talk to Kimberly and, and get the trophy because um, opening the 10th doesn't matter at all. He shoots 213. Anthony's max score is 195. And so just really cool to see. Um, kind of wrapping it up here. You know, he's got the family there. That's awesome. And Anthony Simonson just kind of finishes up. Goes at high flush. But other than that, guys, I really hope that you guys enjoyed. Um, feels great to be able to do this kind of video for you guys. Uh, please let me know of other telecasts that you want to see in the future, maybe. Uh, in the comments section below, be sure to subscribe, leave a like if you liked it, and uh, hopefully I can keep doing this for you guys. I really enjoyed it. Peace out.